In this clip, we're going to take a look at how to work with DWG files in 3ds Max from AutoCAD to produce our interior features and walls. So, first things first, let's take a look at the position of the imported spline set. So if I zoom all the way out here, it's quite common that whatever gets imported from AutoCAD will be kind of thrown all the way out of here. So, first things first is to move this all the way back to the middle of the grid. So it doesn't matter that it's not exactly in the middle right now because I'm going to move it again eventually. So I'm just going to pop this guy in the center. Okay, and now we can see that actually the length of the object is looking quite small because if this grid um, squares refer to one meter squares, this whole building would be around three meters long. I know for a fact that this building is indeed 30 meters long so this whole thing's been imported 10 times too small but before we go ahead and scale this and make some accidental errors let's just go ahead and check the customizing unit setup and make sure that we are actually working in meters so yep that's looking good and then the next step is to go to tools and grids and snaps grid and snap settings and let's just make sure that in the home grid we can actually got the grid spacing set correctly so we can see here grid spacing is set to 10 meters so that could cause some confusion so if I just set this to one meter spacing there we go so now we can actually see that the AutoCAD data has actually been imported correctly but the grid settings and we can actually also right click here by the way so on the snap toggle we can right click and go to the home grid we can see that actually the grid spacing was set to 10 meters. How very confusing. So just make sure that the grid spacing set to 1 meters, and then we can just make sure that actually this guy is the, indeed 30 meters in length. So if I just go to the tape measure tool just to double check this, and go to snap toggle and just snap from here, and snap to here, we can see that the length is 30.4 meters. And that's exactly what we've got in AutoCAD. So that's great. So, if I just undo that and delete the tape that I've just deleted, um, so it created, great. So now we've got a set of splines that is the correct scale, and it's in the correct position. So now let's have a look at the structure of what we've got here. So, in features, we have the interior features of the room. So, we have chairs and chairs and tables and the refrigerated unit and some sofas over here. And then the main structure includes all of the main structures of the building. So that's going to include the exterior and interior walls. And that's exactly what we want to extrude. So I'm going to hide the features of the scene and take a look at the main structure. So one thing that's been left by accident is this counter area. So I don't actually want this included in the, in the extrusion. So let's select the splines and go to spline on the edit modify area here and I'm just going to go ahead and select these guys over here and I'm going to deselect the ones that I actually want to retain as part of the extrusion so I'm going to deselect the door over here so that's looking good I'm going to deselect this little guy over here okay so let's detach this from the main structures let's detach this and I can go to features and scroll up to attach and then attach this to shape 001 okay great I'm just going to going to delete this uh, rogue couple of vertex here so I'm going to do select this and go to vertex and delete okay that's looking pretty good I am also going to attach these two lines here so these two lines refer to a overpass between the two buildings so this will be extruded eventually but I do not want this to be included in the main extrusion. So if I just go to spline and select these two and attach again, let's detach these. I'm just going to call this overpass. Great. And let's hide overpass. So you're going to see these two boxes here. So these two boxes are actually support um, kind of um, structures for the overpass. So these guys can stay. Great, so let's just save the scene because occasionally 3ds Max does crash and it crashes especially when using splines, so make sure that you um, do save quite often. Great, so 
we know that the room height is 3.16 meters. So we can go to the edit spline. Let's drop down to extrude. And then we can see that the extrusion just jumps to some sort of random arbitrary value here. But let's just put this to 3.16. Because I'm, I know that for a fact that that is a room height from AutoCAD. So great, that's looking good. So that's 3.16 meters, and that looks to be around the correct scale. Okay, I'm going to collapse this to a editable poly, not an editable mesh. So for this purpose, I would avoid using an editable mesh and ensure that you are using an editable poly. So this is looking rather dark. So let's hit M on the keyboard to bring up the material editor. And let's just apply a slightly brighter material to this. And let's just hit F4 on the keyboard to apply the edges overview. Now at this point I just like to select this whole thing and just select this colour swatch on the top right here. And just make the actual wireframe a dark colour, so I'm just going to go for uh, black in this case. Great, so now we can see a nicely extruded set of um, splines here. So that's looking good, that's making sense now. So we've got the main entrance just here and the rotating doors the main dining room area, the kitchen and the utilities, and the outer area here. So we're going to have to go in eventually and just start to delete certain walls because, um, for example, this is the boundary, so this face here is kind of not required. So if I just go to Polygon and delete this, and I'm also going to delete these polygons here because these are actually, this is actually the main entrance. So we can just go ahead and start to tidy up the scene so that we can then progress on and start to furnish and build our assets and take it into Unity. Great. So I'm also going to delete this um, polygon here because that's actually our exit to the main um, kind of outsider space just here. Okay. So because we've got a, we've had a, a nice clean spline set, we don't actually have any Z fighting going on, so we don't have any overlapping faces. Uh, and because we've made sure that the spline set is kind of clean, we've got a really nice clean set of geometry as well. If I just go ahead and turn on features again, and overpass, we can see now that we have a really interesting way of positioning our objects. So we could go ahead now and start to build our tables and chairs and everything else and use this as a reference for positioning those objects. So that's one really nice way of using DWG files from AutoCAD to start off to produce a really nice, clean, accurate architectural visualization.